I guess you can go with the leaving lights off, at least for this one. So, uh, talking to some people here over the course of many, many weeks, months, and everything else, some of the topics that keep coming up was this aspect of, and especially with a lot of things that's happened in current events, was this aspect of, I don't care. Or, and, I, and I've heard these words so many times, and it's just, it's, and I kept thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, and I was like, those are some very dangerous words. They're, they're, they're toxic, they're poisonous. And I was sitting here like, because you, you put it in all these different contexts. You sit there, uh, a spouse tells the other spouse, and it's like, I don't care what you think. I don't care if you didn't do the dishes. I don't care. Again, or it's like, I don't care what, you, what, you, what your great idea is at work. It's like, I need you to give this report by right now. I don't care what else is going on. I don't care about your life. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to care. So many things. And then you see out, out these things like people that don't care about life and they go on a rampage. We've, we see this I don't care mentality everywhere. And it's not limited to one place, one thing. It is global. There's so much people, there's so many people that don't care all around the world. And yet, as I so I sat there like, okay, this is something that needs to be addressed. Because this is this is an actually a call to action. But as I started researching, I came up with a very big problem. There's been a call to action going all the way back to the Old Testament. Now, it was reaffirmed with Jesus 2,000 years ago. He brought the law of love and charity. And then, bringing it back to 150 years ago, Alan Kardec comes in with uh, all the teachings from the Spirit of Truth and everything else. And I could, my biggest problem was, is as I started researching caring, there was a place I couldn't go, because caring was everywhere. It's in the Bible, it's in the doctrine, it's everywhere. And it is something that we all need to do, and it's something we all need to share. We need to teach others to be more caring. Because it is, it's, like I said, it's like, how easy is it to say, I don't care? So, and in, as I'm doing my research, something totally unrelated to the doctrine at all was this little blurb that came up. It was, I think it was on Fatherly or something like that. It was a, one of these things where it say, for every five, or every bad thing you do, it takes five things to try to make it right. You forget to take out the trash. You got to do five things to kind of like make up for one bad thing. You slip of the tongue and you say something unkind to a friend or something like that. They remember it. Human, humans remember the negative things far better than they remember the positive. So you have to reinforce the positive five times. Or as Jesus times, seven times 70, is how many times do you have to forgive someone? So the fact that the positive is not as easily remembered puts the focus on, but we all remember the bad. Like we can all easily remember all the bad things that's happened in the last month, last week, last hour, whatever. We all can easily recall bad things. But how often can we remember the good things? And this is where, and this is kind of the thing is like this is where we're saying with our development, and we, we keep talking about how we're imperfect spirits. We're still very low on that progression of, up towards being perfect spirits. I mean, it's, it's, it would be arrogance or on our part to think they're like, oh, we're pretty far down the path. We're not. So we may think we're in 6th or 7th grade, and 12th is a perfect spirit, and we're probably in 3rd grade. So we've advanced a little bit, but there's still a lot more to learn and a lot more to do. And one of the big ones we seem to be involved in is, is that we don't care enough. Uh, to use our, I'll borrow from you, I'll slip it around. He brought up focus. I was like, okay, how many people are so focused on their one thing, they forget the other stuff? They're so focused on their job, they forget to help somebody that's on the side of the street. Or they're so, uh, it's like, we were talking about New York, and I know New York was notorious for this, it's like, 
they have to be at their job, so they get out, they get out there and they start walking, and they are walking fast. There's, there's a reason why they call it the New York Minute, is that they had to be somewhere yesterday. It's like they, as soon as they get done with their, as soon, they leave work, they're already late for their next appointment. Doesn't matter what it is. It's like they're auto, as soon as they're done, they're automatically late for their next thing, and they are hauling to get to where they got to go, and they do not want to stop to help somebody because they're late. But this is, but this is the part of our things and everything else, and, and a lot of it's distractions, a lot of it's unbalanced life, and everything else. Or, like I said, right here, we got all these lovely little things in here: selfishness, pride, vanity, ambition, greed, hatred, envy, jealousy, defamation, all poisonous to the soul. And it's so easy to go into this. I'm sure how many most of us in here have probably seen Star Wars, especially the the, the original trilogy. And it says like the, it's easy to go to the dark side, but it's really really hard to stick to the light. And I mean, just how easy is it to be selfish, be prideful? It's like we always say like a little bit of selfishness is good because you think about yourself, you put yourself number one, so you got to need a little bit of selfishness just to keep thinking about yourself instead of just giving, giving, giving everything and leaving nothing for yourself. They always say you want a little bit of selfishness so you can take care of yourself. A little bit of pride for like your your daughter does, like I have a daughter, she does well in her thing. She did a beautiful artwork, so I have a little bit of pride, but I can't sit and have so much pride and say like, my girl's the best, all yours can just go home. That's the wrong kind of pride. Going back to what I was saying before, that's an I don't care attitude. It's like, I don't care what, what, what your other kids are. I'm, I only care about mine. I don't care about the rest Wrong attitude. It is. Yeah. So you don't care, and then, and I pick. I had another one from the spirits book that I'm getting to here shortly, but yeah, we got all those things, and then, but uh, and this was, this both came from the uh, spiritism and its simplest expressions. But then there it says, like, charity and hum humility are the antidotes. We have to humble ourselves. And we also have to be charitable. We have to keep in mind of other people and how our actions impact other people. It's like, this is, this is how often we hear the, the I don't care. And, and how, how easy is it to teach the I don't care attitude? It's like, I don't care what your beliefs are. I don't care what you think about this. I don't care. Put whatever you want. I don't care blank. You can put so much behind it, but look how harmful and hurtful it is just to say those three words in front of it. Four, unless you want to break up the contraction. But that's, when you sit there and look at it, it's like, how dangerous are those words? I try never to use them. I'm, this is like the most I've said those three words in probably a year. I try to avoid those words. Because every time I hear that come to me, I was like, why continue a discussion? I might as well just zip it, just leave. Go do something else. Because it kills a conversation, it kills a bond. It, I mean, there's what do you do with it? When someone a loved one, a friend, coworker, boss says, "I don't care." What is your response to it? It's like, how do you keep a dialogue? How do you keep it going? You can't. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's its own it's its own poison. So, but you brought the spirits book. And this is the one I I went to. And question nine eighteen: Characteristics of a moral person. By what signs can we recognize in the individuals? That the real uh, the real progress that will raise our spirit within the spirit a hierarchy. Spirit proves its progress when all the actions of its corporeal life consist in practicing the law of God, and when it understands the spirit life beforehand. So this is an answer from the spirits, and then Alan Kardec went in and he had a very lengthy discussion behind this, and I nitpicked it, which is on the next slide. So, but they were sitting here saying, it's like, by their actions is the proof. 
So by your own actions, you're known. God knows you through your actions. So we were talking about the inactions. So if you're going to so if you're going to say don't care, that's an action. And are you going to be resolved for it? I mean the Bible's the Bible's full of things about don't care. I think especially the ones where it says like when you knock when he's knocking on the door and people says like we didn't know it was you. And it says whoever you did for the least of men is you did for, did for me. It's like those who took, accepted me in or accepted the least of least of their own, of humanity, accepted me. That's caring. We got the, the good Samaritan. There's another one about not caring and caring, because it mentioned like a priest, a banker walking right on by, not caring, and then they have a Samaritan who was like the one that was not liked, the despised ones, came and helped a person, and says here. Here's more money. If you, if you need more money, I, when I come back again, I'll pay you the bill. Make sure this person's taken care of. He cared. This center has a lot of caring activities. We go and we, we do lunches and clothings for the homeless. We have our own, and then we have the, the outreach programs. And we also have the, the spiritual healing class that you come in here for, that you can come in. So there's a lot of care that is brought here. And many religious institutions around the world should also be promoting caring. It was actually one of the part of the reading I was in here. It's like, it was, it was one of those things, like, if you're too part of a religious organization that doesn't care, doesn't show caring, it's not a good place to be. Find another one. No matter what it is, so they were they were pushing they were pushing this thing. It's like you need to care. We need to teach our coworkers. We need to teach our children, our family members, and everything else the value of caring. We need to promote caring because that's that's what we're commanded to do. We're supposed to be a live a life of caring, but. Going into what Kardec, like I said, he did a pretty lengthy discussion, and I just nit, uh, nitpicked it down as best I could. Um, truly moral individuals practice a law of justice, love, and charity. There's those words again, love, charity. Like I said, it's the whole doctrine, full of it. In its most complete purity. So we've got to be just, loving, and, and show charity. And they check themselves. We have that lovely phrase, know thyself. So they go out there and they say, like, have you violated the law? Have you broken a law? No, we're not talking speed laws. We're talking the laws of God. Ten commandments, golden rule. Again, especially if you look followed by the golden rule. If you follow by the golden rule, the words I don't care should never cross your lips. Because if you truly are following the golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated. You want to be cared for, just like they, you want to care. So, if you want to be cared for, you treat the care, you give that care to others. If you want to be respected, you got to show respect. If you want to be loved, you got to show love. Simple thing with the golden rule. It's so simple, so powerful, and it's also very easy to break. Because how many of us do that all the time, even without knowing it? We'll do something, and we're like, ah, can't be bothered with doing that, and boom not realizing it's going to hurt someone else down the road. And I mean, I talked to a friend of mine that they would they would litter, throw everything out the car window, run a road trip. And it's like, ah, I I don't too busy to I don't want to keep it in the car. I want to keep the car clean. Throw it outside. So, car's clean, but you didn't care about the road or what, where it's going to line up and if an animal's going to eat it or whatever and get sick and die. And didn't care about anything. Just want to make sure their car was clean. Okay. But you've got to think. You've got to put your actions to it. Have they committed any wrong? It may not even be a law, but it's a wrong thing to do. Again, so much. There's so much out there that you can just sit there and think about easily. 
forgetting to do it, sending a thank you note. You get a present, you don't send a thank you note. It's not against the law, but it's kind of like the wrong thing to do because it's like, why do they give it to you if it's not acknowledged? Do, have done all the good that is within their power to do. This is going back to what he was saying earlier before about the, uh, can I just not do anything? Well, you could, but if there's something within your power to do, it goes against you. And how hard is it to care? Even a simple thing is saying, saying, going to someone saying, hey, I understand you have a rough patch, but you will get through this. Don't give up. It sucks. It stinks. But it's going to help you in the end. You can do better. And I, that may be enough. I've read stories on people that they did not commit suicide because on the day they were planning to commit, someone acknowledged them. I, uh, one of the stories, I can't remember what it was, it was a high school student. They were in there, they were so, so distraught, so heartbroken, ready to, ready to end it. And one of their books fell out of it, and it was just adding to the fuel of their fire until someone came by and said, here, let me help you. Let me pick this up for you. Are you okay? That was it. Stop them from going through and committing suicide. That was a simple act of caring. But it was enough. So who's to say that a simple act of caring might be the, enough to change the world's life? We were talking... Uh, uh, it's been an, it's an older movie, but who's ever seen the movie Pay It Forward? Anyone here? One, two, three. Very powerful movie. Very sim with a message. And it was funny too because if you follow the movie, the the person that started it, he wanted one result. He was expecting one result, but he got a totally different result on because of it. And not realizing that the fact that by paying it forward, by doing three kind acts to, to three people with no... And then it says, like, oh, let me pay you back for it. No, 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 pay it forward. It's amazing what you can do with that. I can even remember a time I was at, uh, at a mall. I pull up, to, pull up into a parking space, I open my door. There's a wallet right there. Full. Money, car, credit cards. Everything was in it. and But it had, thankfully it had a driver's license, had their address on it. So I went in, did the GPS. I, instead of going to the mall, I drove to that person's house, knocked on the door, and I'm like, who are you? And like, oh, I found your wallet. They were going to give me the money that was in it. And I says, no, 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 pay it forward. I have no idea what happens because of it, but I hope they took it. But that's, that's me showing an act of caring. I didn't have to. I didn't. I could just left the wallet there. I could have just maybe picked it up, thrown it in the trash, but I took it and gave it back to its owner. Took the time out of my day to to return that item as an act of caring. And I'm really hoping that these acts of caring need to grow, need to multiply. We see so much of it today of the non-caring. And it's, again, it's, it's the dark side. It's so easy to fall to it, but it's, it's, it's actually not hard to care. But we need to do it more. But it, it does take an effort. That's, that's why it's, like this said, the dark side and light side. It takes an effort to live to, by the light side. Yeah. This is just, will use you to help somebody. Oh yes. If you open yourself to good, you become a vehicle of good. You know? Yeah. And then good comes through you. Got more good comes to you. Then what happens inside your body? Go for it. Uh, let's say you want to help somebody. Mm hmm And it becomes a habit not to help, but the person to depend on you. 
That's that's a di yeah, that's a different story. Okay, you have a chance to help that person and mm -hmm. everybody. But that doesn't help the person to help herself. True. So because you, then you go to the then you're going to that uh, the that one little uh, saying about give a give a man a fish you feed him for a day teach a man a fish you feed him for a lifetime. True. So, so they, there's a there's a part to it and yes there is a, a there is and then uh, I don't know which book it is uh, that we have there is a there is a there is one where they were talking about there was this father uh, in the spirit world overseeing his child and he was sitting there like. Please, why aren't you helping him? Why is he struggling so much? And they turned over and they did the, the little psychoscope and everything else. Well, if we helped him, this is what his future would be like. And it was, and he never learned the lesson that he was supposed to learn, which was to value what he had. If he just everything was given to him, if he was like rich and everything else, he was he was just going to waste it and waste his life on frivolous stuff, debauchery, everything else. And then his father, after seeing this, he says, you know what, forget it. Let him suffer. That way he has the more moral lesson. And that was part of it. And it's kind of like going back to this thing here. Maybe maybe that benevolence is through hard hard times. We, we have to, like, we have our children. We can't just give them the PlayStation, the Xbox, or the candy all the time. Especially the candy. We can't just give them, oh, you want candy? Here you go. You want a Snickers bar for breakfast? Everything. No, they, they, there's a time and place that they need good food. Exactly. Yeah. When you talk about kids, I mean, that's a great example, but when you talk about adults that you're trying to help. I know, it's harder. It's hard, but then when you come to that point, you become the bad guy. Yes. And sometimes you have to be what they call a bad guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Help for the person who's creating dependence. Yes. So your actions not helping you, you keep that ball. When it comes to the kid, uh, it's part of what you learn, or what you were pushed, mm -hmm. or in a way there was nobody there to teach you, and life helped you to learn. Right. So if you went through either one of these ways, it's clear for you that your kid needs to develop that on his own. And you're there while he can do it, but there is a point that you say, okay, I'll be it. Mm -hmm. And even though some people say, don't you think it's too early? Well, you never know how long I'm going to be here for him. So I am here and I'm watching him. But in a way, you get to be called the bad guy. And mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Well, how many how many of us have cursed God? Like, says, why have you cursed me? Like, it may be for a good reason. Like, says, I I did my time in the military. Boot camp stinks. If anyone's ever seen Full Metal Jacket, the the, the whole thing, I mean, that is hell. It's designed to be that way because it pushes you through the pressure, pushes you through your limits and everything else so that by the time you get to the other side, you're able to, in this case, in there, in, at least with military, you're able to fight in combat in wars in the most hellish conditions of all, but you will say, it's not that bad. I had worse in basic training. So, please don't take me wrong. That guy that you're standing out there, Mm-hmm. Has the full trigger report. I have. At least not not at any person. But yes. I would so but hey that that's that's again, please don't take your No, that's because this goes back to this I mean it's part of the reason why I'm here. It's part of the reason why I am up here. Is that was my dilemma, that was my troubles. I knew like I knew from, as I said in previous lectures, it's like from eight years old, I knew I needed to live a moral life. When I was reading the Boy Scout handbook, I didn't care about the merit badges. The stuff I learned as a tenderfoot, or the, the very first merit, the very first rank, 
That was the most important stuff that you needed to know. That's why they taught it to you first. The scout law, the scout motto, the oath, and everything else. Be prepared, do a good deed daily. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. That's still in my heart to this day. Because I knew when I came, like, from about when I was eight years old, I knew that something, I had to be more moral. And then, yes, I joined the military thinking it would help guide me. It didn't. It, t- it, helped my, it helped refine my character. It allowed me to tolerate more. Even in the Bible, it says we have the peace keepers. Mm-hmm. And in the Revelation, we have the fighters of the good. So it always has to be, unfortunately, in the world that we live in, in the human world, that we do need military personnel. Or, like, the, other, the, one, that draw, the one that there's two that draw me was that there says, like, uh, there's no love greater than the one that will give his life for another. Right. So that was something that appealed to me. I was like, I, I would be the person that will defend someone else. I will throw myself in front of a car if it saves someone else yeah, from getting free. hurt. So, no, it's not. But, and then the other one I had was a, it's from Timothy. It was like, um, God was saying, well, who shall I send? And then raised his hand and says, I will go. Call on me and I will go. So, but then after being in the military, that's when I got introduced to spiritism. And then that's when, and it, and it was, it was, and then through, like this is a personal thing, it's like I remember having a uh, mediumistic meeting and there was a message for me there and they were sitting like, yes, and I was saying like, I, in all my previous incarnations, I was drawn to the arts, but all kinds of arts, painting, sculpting, music, acting, but the one that drew me the most was the art of war. And then, and the spirits were trying to get me away from that. So they gave me a medical condition so I can't serve. Then they introduced me to spiritism. They introduced me, they, they brought me across the country. I was in Seattle at the time, and I was introduced to a center in New Jersey. There was a lot that had to happen for that to work. I had to meet someone in Seattle. We both had to lose our jobs. That person had to go back to New Jersey. I had to get a job in Pennsylvania and then reach out and then get an inspiration to call that person and say, hey, I'm, I'm bored, what do you want to do? And they introduced me to the center. That's a very short Cliff Notes version of it, but that's what had to happen. That was a lot of moving pieces that the man upstairs and all the angels and, and mentors and everything else had to put together to get bring, bring me the inspiration to say, hey, we put the seed in you that you had to live a moral life. Here comes spiritism that reinforces it. And, this, and that's where I learned about the cause of effect is not just physics. That's karma. That's spiritual. That's all kinds of things. That was mind-blowing for me. Oh yeah, or we learn from the mistakes of others. Part of the reason I got called to start lecturing, to start teaching, is like I've made a ton of mistakes. I've gone through some bad stuff. Like yeah, we're all we're all imperfect souls, but as Spiritism says, we are perfectible. Maybe not in this lifetime, but we keep learning from our past mistakes and keep refining and, and doing, and hopefully the, the good we do in this life, the care we show in this life will reflect in our next life. But another one I was just thinking, it, we were talking about this and it reminded me of a tragic story uh, from a fellow soldier that um, came back from the war in Iraq 
and he had um, he had post traumatic stress disorder, and he and he it was one of those times where I sat down and I was like, hey, in the military they have battle buddies and there's something to lean on. This guy was having a really rough time, and I was like, hey, I'm not in the service anymore, but I see you're going through some rough times. Let me be your battle buddy. Let me help you as much as I can. It's like I'm not a psychiatrist or nothing, but I'm here to help you to as best I can. Be that person for you. Be your be that someone you can lean on in your hard times. Because he's going he was going through a real bad time. And he finally it took a while, but he finally told me what broke him. And it was and it was this. Uh, he was he was in the Battle of Fallujah. So like a three day battle or something like that. It was a long battle. And he's sitting there fighting, fighting, fighting and everything else. And while he's sitting there shooting under all this pressure that he was going under, his mind just couldn't take the stress anymore. And it just, it just told his body to start laughing. He's literally shooting at people and he has this uncontrollable laughter. He just started laughing. As he's shooting, pulling the trigger, it broke him because he can, he's laughing as he's seeing him hit people with this thing. It crushed his spirit because he thought he had finally gone over the edge like he loved killing. He thought this to himself. Not realizing his body literally broke under the stress and had to do a release of some kind and it chose laughter. But he couldn't see that in himself. He broke down and he thought that he was so terrible. He was such a bad man that he stopped caring about the people he was killing because he was laughing at it. And he ended up killing, committing suicide because he couldn't handle the fact that he did something so, he thought he did something so horrible as that. And I, I mean, I'm like sitting here trying, I was like, and all the, all the facts and all the rationale in the world wasn't going to get to him because it stuck right here in his heart. And like back in, uh, and I remember, um, for those that remember the one I mentioned back in at Halloween, the the one, uh, uh, one of the few times when I was working as a medium, on our mediumistic things, there was a I got to experience this little scene from Vietnam, where uh, I was like feeling, I was like I was feeling in the body of a soldier. It was nighttime. Attack happens. And chaos, bombs, everything blowing up, bullets whizzing everywhere. And he, this guy thinks he sees somebody. He thinks he sees an enemy. He goes, for whatever reason, he has his bayonet on. He goes and he stabs someone. He ends up stabbing his best friend. His best friend was trying to race back to him. And he thought it was the enemy. And he ended up stabbing his best friend. I can feel his heart, I can feel his soul break at that moment to the point that he barely felt the knife of that when he got stabbed in the back. He didn't feel that, but he felt the, 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 the weight of having stabbed the best friend because he cared about his best friend so much. We've gone off traffic, um, way off the trap topic, but this is, when you think about it, it's like, those are, I mean, that, those are our emotions. That's our, and these were people calling out for help. And they bring it back to the caring part. These are people that needed care. One, one, through, one through a mediumistic experience. The other one, uh, trying to be, be a person in real life. And I wasn't enough. Or whoever else he was leaning on was not enough to save him from committing suicide. But I tried. I didn't want him to go. I knew he was going through a rough patch, but that's all. Yeah, that's all I can do. But then I, but that's why I take this. I took his lessons. So I says like, I understood. I like I went through and I thought about it, so that when we have when I encounter the next person like him, that's really downtrodden, that's hurting. Hopefully, I'll be stronger and better prepared. To stop them from making that that ultimate sin. No, but the problem is not you. The no, it's not. Person, the one that needs help, they <coughs> have to accept the 
your help. Right. You can give all the help that you want, but if I am not open mm -hmm. to receive your help, nothing's going to happen. Right. So the most powerful question that you can pose yeah. to anybody is how can, can I help, help you? you? Mm -hmm. Because then you're going to tell me, yeah. I'm not going to offer something that you're going to say no, right? Or that you're going to defend that you're yeah. going to help. How can I help you? Yeah. Because if it's not, then you're going to feel guilty. Right. Because you are not strong enough mm -hmm. to help the other person. But there is nothing that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can feel it, you can hear it in my voice now. Yeah, I it's, know that's what I'm saying. But, yeah, I, I mean, I tried, the, I did the best I could. I know. Your intentions were good, and I think that's what matters the most, is your intention. You have good intentions. Mm -hmm. You can sleep you at night in peace because yeah. you tried your best. Right. But he was not open to receive your best. <coughs> yes. Well, he needed more than that. But, yeah, it's about care. But it is about care. Like, this, this, whole, this whole lecture is about caring. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's not contagious enough to make too much of a difference. But if we just continue that, like if you do what you feel that you have to care, even if you didn't receive the result, you are an example. And that's mm -hmm. what Jesus said, you know, be the shining light. Yeah. You don't let your light be under the table. Like no, shine. shine, yes. Because by you doing what you're doing, or any one of us have done any act of Kindness and help, even if you know mm -hmm. you're not save a person, people are looking, people yeah. are seeing, and, and they 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 appreciate it. I will touch them, and they perhaps will do the same. But, you, know, you just it. you just reminded me of another story, uh, New York, of a story of a, a doorman at I don't know which which of the uh, hotels he was at, but um, he would. Since he was working at a hotel and everything else, he'd open the door, and as people would come in and go, he would sit there and say, "Like, have a beautiful, blessed day." That was all he did. He's like, he "Open the door." It's like, "Have a beautiful, blessed day." Have a beautiful, blessed day. It is. So, well, someone someone got offended, and they asked, had the person be fired. And then what had ended up happening is, once he was fired, all these people that used to come to that hotel says, "Where's so and so?" I. It's like that was actually like. That was like the best part of my day. I'd be leaving. I was like, I may have had the most miserable night or everything else, but walking out of that door and having that doorman say, have a beautiful, blessed day, was enough to kind of like change my mind. And I went and I went to work in a better mood. No matter how, I, how my day started, I had a better thing. And I believe that, I believe he got, uh, he was hired by another, by another one and he started working in another hotel and he was strictly hired for the purpose of saying, we want you to say, have a beautiful, blessed day. And I remember from that, from that when I tried putting that in there as much as I can, it's like when I say, it's like, when I say it's, instead of saying, like, have a good day, or anything, I try to say, have a beautiful, blessed day. And it's been something I've been trying to emulate from there. So to take your point, making it contagious. And yes, it is something that we need to do. We need to, we need to share it there and say, have a lovely day. Have a beautiful day. We need to promote that positive, caring attitude. So, but I was going to go on with the gospel here, but I wanted to hit this one big topic here. Since we've been talking about caring or not caring, something that uh, from the gospel that came to my mind, I underlined it here. Every plant that may heavenly Father that my heavenly Father has not planted shall be uprooted. So we can so we go back and we think of all the creations of man, everything that man has created for whatever purpose, racism, I mean, the, the whole gamut, so much, all the divisiveness and things, so much of that is man-made. It's not by God. And so Jesus Put it in there. It's like anything not that my father has not planted will be uprooted. So, which is, I mean, I read that and I take a little bit of comfort thinking like there are a lot of these bad things that are going on in our lives eventually has to come out. It has to go away. I shouldn't have to be a soldier anymore in the future. 
We should be able to turn weapons into plows. That's, I mean, that's the goal. But we can't just sit here and twiddle our thumbs and wait for it to just miraculously happen. We were actually charged to make it happen through our efforts, through learning, through our knowledge, through our progress. We've seen it in, from the 2,000 years. We've had a lot of highs and lows. I always use the, I always use the example of the atomic bomb because it's more recent, but it also is the one, it's one of the few times where humanity has finally come to a spot where they said they finally developed a weapon that they were afraid to use. It was used two times, has never been used since. For all the wars and all everything else that's happened since then, no one in all that time has bothered to think about using that weapon again. As horrible as it was, they try to avoid using it at all costs. No matter how much they don't care about the other person, they finally found something so like, you know what? I'm not using that one. And that's actually a positive. Because we finally found we finally found a limit. And we finally found a place where humanity they says, yeah, we went too far and they pulled themselves back. We need to do that a lot more in a lot more places. Care for our spouses, care for our children more. Care for our fellow neighbors. Get rid of those three ugly words, I don't care. I mean, it's a hard thing to do, but that's our mission. Love and charity. <laughs> like, or charity and humility, love, charity, humility. Three, the big three. It's all over in the God, it's all over in the doctrine, everywhere. Be humble, show charity. Like my first slide was Kardec's famous words. Without charity, there is no salvation. And how can you have charity without being without caring? So picking a third book. Heaven and Hell. So I've done Spirit's Book Gospel, now I'm doing Heaven and Hell. Reparations. How to fix it. You made a boo-boo. My first slide. Five, five good things for every one bad one. So here's a reparation. Doing what they failed to do. Fulfilling their duties, neglected or ignored. Going back to what you were saying earlier before. The act of not doing something has a consequence, going back with cause and effect, and accomplishing missions at which they had failed. So how many times are we sitting there and like, okay, tried it and failed, tried it and again failed, but hopefully the next time you'll get it right. Now, for spiritism, that can be lifetimes. We can also think in our daily lives and saying, hey, I could, like, Maybe it's something like simple as I'll get up there and clean the gutters or some, some mundane task. It's like, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do that. I've been meaning to do that. But you finally do it and getting that sense of accomplishment. And then Paul and Stephen. I... This is like, of all that entire book, as deep as that book is, this is the one section that got me the most. And it was simply these three little sentences that Abigail said. Paul was sitting here like, hey, what do I do to acquire a perfect understanding for Christ's designs? He's out in the desert all by himself. He's not starting his ministry yet. And his beloved says, and it's like, hey, you got to love. you got to care. And then, what about the, con it's like, hey, without real comprehension, what could, what could he do to reach the elevated expression of effort of Jesus Christ? Put the work in. Work. Be active. Do actions. 
And what happens if you get discouraged? Hope nonetheless. Keep it going. If you fall down, get back up. Like we were just mentioning the, the person that I couldn't save. But I have to hope nonetheless that maybe I can get the next one. Or others. People in this room, people on the video, whoever. Hopefully they get this message and realize that the value of caring and getting rid of those three ugly words, that I don't care. I know we're getting close to the end of the time, so I'll, eventually I'll, if I were it, I'll do a meditation and kind of help bring us down. Probably me especially. <laughs> um, because this is one that's been, it's, as people have known me a while, this one's been on my radar for quite a while, is this, I don't care. Because I hear it so much. I see it in the news. Even the little scare we had on 4th of July here in Lake Eola. Someone, I guess, lit off a firecracker, started a panic. Because the day before, there was the incident in Chicago. So people were on edge. They didn't think, then it's like, ah, it's firecrackers, nothing of it. But by not caring or not being realizing the impacts of the day before, it caused another panic. So maybe that's the thing for caring. Five good things for one bad thing. Five, yeah, five good things for one bad thing. So if that's anything to take from this, was that, was that things like we, we, we stumble, we fall, we treat someone poorly, five good things, you know? And it's not flowers, chocolate, kiss, hug, and a, and a note. No, 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 no. No, you're, you're talking, yeah, flowers can be one, but then you're talking like taking out the trash for a week, your uh, back massage, foot massage, um, special bubble bath, whatever. So... Mm -hmm. Like in my household, we eliminated the word hate. Yes. If you want to use, if you're very upset about something and you want to use that word, you say, I don't like that very much. I just like it profound, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't use that word because it has an energy to it. Yeah, it does. But by you, by you, by your talk tonight, I, we're going to incorporate that I don't care. It doesn't have a place there. Yeah. Blessed are the pure heart from the gospel. It was right there in, the, in this, this specific section, blessed are the pure heart. These people honor me with their lips, but not their hearts, which remain, for, which would remain far from me. It's right there what you were just saying, the hate. It's like whatever comes out of the mouth, from, or whatever comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And it's, it's the heart that makes it unclean. And that goes right exactly what you were saying. And I'd skip this with all everything else we were talking about. But yes, that is that is quite literally it. We got to get the take the do not care, take the take that ugliness out of our heart, fill it with love, and share that. Bring that love out. It's easy to buy um, things that you think that you care because you do something. You're doing charity. Yes, I give donations, but I don't participate. I just give something. I just support something to somebody mm -hmm. else. So. You buy your way to goodness, but on your, only with your lips. Mm -hmm. So your heart is still. Yeah. And you always have to watch not what goes inside your mouth, but whatever comes out. Actually, that's pretty much what you need to worry about more is what's going out. Yeah. So, but with that, I will. Uh, have us shut down the lights, and I will try to give us a quick, quick little positive vibrations. Let's all 
sit down, close our eyes, and take a deep breath in. Let it out. Breathe in. And out. Let's take a moment to relax, calm our minds, calm our hearts. Just feel the peace and love wash over us. As we take a deep breath in, feel the love, the positive energy come into our bodies. With every exhale, let us get rid of the negative, the bad energy, I don't care. Let get it all out. Breathe in the good, clean, loving air and expel the negativity and the hatred. As we sit back and relax, let's feel the weight of our struggles our worries, our pains and sufferings, let it just fall off as you take a deep breath in so that we feel lighter, refreshed, energized, loving and caring, as if we're floating on air Let us continue this feeling and just keep breathing in a relaxed state as we start our passes.